Let's get the latest business news now. The U.S. Federal Reserve has decided to raise its benchmark interest rate once again. That's in a bid, of course, to tame inflation. Charles Pelgram uh, is on set to tell us more. Charles. That's right. Uh, the American Central Bank opting to raise the interest rate by 25 basis points. That's 0.25%. Um, this is a slower rise than what we've seen from the Fed since it started raising rates in March last year in the wake of the war in Ukraine and its impact on the uh, global inflation. And this brings the federal funds rate to between 4.5 and 4.75 percent, the highest level since September 2007. The reasoning being that higher interest rates means borrowing money becomes more expensive, thereby leading to less liquidity in the system, putting a break on price increases. U.S. inflation has slowed down to 6.5 percent in December since hitting a peak of 9.1 percent in June. But while the trend is encouraging Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell, he wants to wait longer before starting to think about lowering rates once again. Take a listen. I think certainty is just not appropriate here. Inflation, it's just harder to forecast inflation. It may come down faster. It may take longer to come down. And, you know, our job is to deliver inflation back to target, and we will do that. But I think we, we're going to be cautious about, about declaring victory and, you know, sending signals that, uh, that we think that the, the game is won because, it, you know, it's, we've got a long way to go. Well, curbing inflation is also the priority of the European Central Bank, which will be announcing its uh, latest interest rate decision later this Thursday. Uh, they're set to raise borrowing costs uh, by 0.5 percent, leading to a, a 2.5 percent rate rate which was uh, in negative territory at the beginning of 2022. Well, inflation in the eurozone is also slowing down from its 10.6% uh, uh, peak back in October 2022, uh, currently at 8.5%, but still uh, far from comfort for policymakers whose target is a 2% inflation rate. Uh, points of concern are the fact that, for instance, food inflation hit a record high of 14% in January. Let's take a look at the stock markets now. Investors mostly holding on to the uh, dovish parts of the uh, Federal Reserve statements and press conference, uh, meaning that if inflation continues on its trajectory, interest rates will stop rising. Shares are trading up this Thursday at the open in Europe. As you can see here, the Paris CAC Gallon up by half a percent and the FTSE in London up by a quarter of a percent. Shares in Asia uh, mostly trading uh, higher as well, as you can see, uh, the Nikkei in Tokyo finishing the session up two-tenths of a percent. Uh, the Hang Seng in Hong Kong down one uh, uh, half of a percent, though. And the latest episode in the uh, Adani conglomerate roller coaster saga, the Indian group has decided to scrap the share sale for Adani Enterprises that ended on Tuesday. These uh, uh, bids have now been canceled and funds uh, should be returned. Over 80 billion euro was wiped off all publicly listed Adani companies since a short seller issued a report last week saying the group engaged in accounting fraud and market manipulation. Karis Garland tells us more. It's a dramatic setback for one of India's biggest companies and its dropout turned billionaire chief. Adani Enterprises called off its 2.2 billion euro share sale on Thursday despite securing bids for 92 percent of the allocation. Gautam Adani said it wasn't morally correct to proceed with the FPO, citing market volatility, and promised to refund investors. The interest of my investor is paramount and everything is secondary. This decision will not have any impact on our existing operations as well as our future plans. The announcement comes after a tumultuous nine days, sparked by the release of a damning report. Hindenburg Research, which specializes in short selling, said Gautam Adani was, quote, pulling the largest con in corporate history. The two-year investigation alleges stock manipulation and accounting fraud. Adani dismissed the accusations and on Sunday released its own 413-page report in response. However, the damage was already done on the stock market, Adani Enterprises losing tens of billions of euros before scrapping its share sale. The turmoil has also seen Gautam Adani himself knocked off the list of the world's 10 richest men. According to Forbes, about 20 billion euros was wiped off his personal fortune within 24 hours. 
Meta Platforms, which owns Facebook, Instagram, and WhatsApp, has seen its shares soaring after announcing a $40 billion share buyback and stricter cost controls in 2023. Mark Zuckerberg calling uh, this year the year of efficiency, saying he will focus on improving content recommendations with AI and ad targeting. This follows a tough time for Meta, who saw its ad revenue fall after the pandemic and had to cut more than 11,000 jobs in November. And Samsung has unveiled its latest range of premium smartphones, the Galaxy S23. More powerful cameras and faster chips are the main attraction, but will this be enough to revive a market that has been going through unprecedented contraction while well, consumers still spending less in a context of rising prices and uncertain economic outlooks? Part of the event included showing uh, snippets of films that were shot using the smartphone uh, including one directed by a Gladiator director, Ridley Scott. I don't know, Allison, if this will be enough uh, to get consumers on board, but um, quite, quite the endorsement. Yeah, I think I'd like to see the film. Not so excited about the phones, but love a movie. Uh, Charles, thank you very much for that business update. That was our business editor, Charles Pelgrin.